Okay. Yes, so. Yes, how was this week? I mean, the, I guess the headlines mainly were the Las Vegas thing. That was pretty tragic. Yeah, that's um pretty yeah, pretty devastating and how can you prevent crazy people? Um a guy is in Las Vegas. He broke a window out of a thirty second floor with a bunch of chairs and because the windows are sealed. And he had these submachine guns and he shot down into a crowd of uh concert goers. They were at a country western concert down in the thing, and he killed 58 people and injured over 500. Shoot, he had these high power, this with a big bulky machine gun, and he's just shooting, and he had like 30 guns. He just kept shooting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds into this crowd of people. Police saw him, they rushed up to him, and he shot himself. Just as they were breaking in the door. He They don't know the motive of why he was just a white guy. They don't know if he was anti-country music or anti Yes, see? Evil, evil. He wasn't a terrorist, you know, a Muslim or anything. He was a gambler. He was an addicted gambler. His dad was a gambler, and he did a lot of investment. Yeah, I think, was he a bank robber? Yeah, so... Good. Ellen White says men possessed by demons will do. That's, yes, that's the kind of thing we need to look for. We need to see those things because that's, yeah. In the end times, you know, there will be fearful sights in the heavens that where there will be big changes in the weather, you know. The okay. Okay, yeah, so it uh, is a fearful world, and we need to, to not be fearful. We need to have our faith strengthened so that we're, we're faith in God. God, you know, not to fear the body, to fear, you know, him who was able to, yes. But it is, uh <laughs> yes. So, yeah, these lessons are good to help us get our faith. These are really geared towards strength and faith. That Galatians and now this thing to really build our faith up to have that 100% faith in God time and not let the things of the world, you know, shatter us or tremble us. You know. All right, let's bow our heads as we start here. Father in heaven, thank you for this time we can have together. And we just pray for our country and this world that your spirit will stay with us. Your angels will protect us and watch over us. We know the end times are coming and tragedies are going to be around us. Help our faith to be strengthened as we open your word and learn these examples of, from Paul and others that our faith will be strengthened so we can go through this time confident in you and knowing that you are the protector. You are the one who loves us and looking out for us. So we pray for your spirit to be with us, to be our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're starting the book of Romans. This time, did you all get your Sabbath school quarterly, this new quarterly? Rome. So we went from Galatians to Rome, okay? So just some introduction here. Um, Paul first 
got to take Paul. Now, who's Paul, right? And I want to sort of go off track here and give just an introduction. What was Paul? Who was Paul? Was it Sadducee or Pharisees? Yeah, Pharisees. Yes, Paul was a very good Jew. He was a good legalistic Jew, right? Highly educated, smart. He was so radical, he was even going out with death squads to kill the Christians. I mean, <laughs> that sounds extreme. He was a, a ver very extreme, right? Yes, okay. He even killed, he was right there at the stoning of Stephen, holding the coats, everything. Okay, so here's Paul, very legalistic, right? He meets Jesus, and as we learn in Galatians, he, Jesus converted, so obviously he realized, I've been wrong. I've been wrong in my denouncing of Jesus and my legalism, right? Legalism to all these strict Jewish laws, that's not the way God wanted it. So all through Galatians, he's talking about the law, right? You guys, don't be so committed to the law because that's what leads you down this, this trail, uh, this legalistic trail. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. This, that ceremonial law, and also he includes in there circumcision, you know, the, that thing. That was, that was sort of that whole thing, okay? <clears throat> so, so what I'm sort of making the point is that because he knew that life under the law, he was very concerned with getting out from under that, and he wanted other people to realize that, and that's sort of what Romans is about. We need to realize that our salvation by faith. It's always by faith. I mean, Ab we got it right from Abraham. Abraham believed God was counted. It's always been the same, but we got off track. Okay? We got off. Yeah. Pharisees, yes. Okay, so sort of in that thing, <coughs> you can sort of see this, you know, you have the way, right? We talked about this, the way. This was the Christian, that's the name of the church, was the way, right? Before they got called Christians, you know, sort of. The. Now, you have on this one side over here the legalism. You know, that's this thing about the law that's talking about all these ceremonial laws and everything, people get so strict. But I want to sort of make this analogy to some, in our day, we sort of have this legalism here to the, I call it the far right, um, or the religious right. The religious right. Remember when they had the Jerry Falwell and all this stuff, wanting to make laws about Sunday. You have to close your business on, see that's the far right over here, right? You've got to close your business on Sunday. Okay, now over here you have um, the other, let me see how I word this. The, the other side of it, the um, permissiveness. Permissiveness. Sort of the cheap grace that you were talking about. We can do whatever we want. We don't have the law anymore. You know, cheap grace. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. I mean, a five-year-old child can understand that. Yeah, you still have still have laws. We have to have laws to protect us, you know. So um, I'll call this 
cheap grace or whatever you want to see, you know. So, and then, so over here on this side, um, on this right, I call this the religious right. When you go far left, you come out here to the, um, the atheist. Right? So the atheists don't believe in God. These people believe in God. They're legalistic, you know. Now the atheists, now if you get under the atheists, you have the Marxists. Right? Are the Marxists legalistic? Yes, they're extremely legalistic. With communism, you've got to follow the law. So these two sort of come around together, and they both end up legalistic. It's all <laughs> you be, see, like when you, when you have this socialism and everything like this, it only works if you follow a per, certain prescribed thing. Ultimately, it all comes to, you know, it's all sort of the same ditch or the same trap or whatever. And you, you can think this, you know, on many deeper levels, you know, this, how some of these things. Because, like, on this, this far right, the religious, also you have the, um, the Islam. Aren't they religious? They're far, they're religious. What about, and you like the, the neo-Nazis? You know, they're, they're religious. You know, the white supremacists. It's all extreme religion, you know, extreme dogma. It's all wrong. All this, when you get to these extremes, these extremes, just like this, the atheists and the Marxists, you know, you get, it's all extreme, extremists. So there is this middle. See, there's this middle. Yes, it gives you one way. Yes, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out what this shooter did, you know, the Las Vegas shooter, what, where, where was he on this whole thing, you know, maybe you just, yes, now, maybe when you get this out here, maybe when you come around, you know, if this comes around like this, you know, and meets up with this side like this, it meets up with this side, we call, you know, you've heard of the spiritualism. Maybe that spiritualism is the fact that Satan's behind all this thing. The spiritualism, you know, like you said, Satan, possession, demons, I don't know. It's the way to connect them. That was what they were called, yes. And that, it's interesting that that term way has been used all the way through the Bible. From the beginning to the end, it's always the way. You know, the way of the Lord, the way, you know, he shall lead you and he'll make your crooked lanes straight, you know. So Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, yes. The way, it's a much more comforting, loving thing to see his way, you know. Okay, so this is, um, <clears throat> so Paul, sort of analogous to us, where are we, you know, do, are, we, are we seeing this Paul going from this, so legalistic thing to realizing, hey, I've got to, you know, not be all this so legalistic to the point, you know, where I'm, I've lost the whole love of humanity. I think my, I'm losing my leg here. Yeah, come on, Robert, you're, you. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we've got Paul now. Now we have to understand the history. What's going on in Rome right now? Okay? What is the context? When we study the Bible, what is the context that we're looking at? So you have Rome... What was the religion of Rome before Christ? Paganism. Yes, well, you know the, the whole beast thing. Now, this is my understanding. I don't know. You know, you've got the beast, you know, the, the Daniel, right? Daniel, you've got the, you know, the, the thing here, the, the big um, prophecy. Okay, what's this right up here? Babylon, bolt, yeah, head of gold, right? Babylon. 
Medes and Persians, right? Greece. And then down here, Rome. And then here, this is pagan Rome. And this is papal. Is that right? Am I right in here? And and isn't when it says he shall <coughs> way I understand this is Rome, pagan Rome had this daily sacrifice. The daily, right? It says that he will cause an end to the daily, right? So pagan Rome ended. This daily ended. And that's where we got pagan, the papal Rome now. That's Okay. So here we are, papal Rome. Now, we're not there yet. We're just beginning the, new, the beginnings of Christianity in Rome. But you had coming from this pagan Rome. And I sort of think, because Jesus came in the fullness of time. So I think it was just at this perfect time. But I think people were saying, this paganism, it's a bunch of baloney. We've got to have something better than this. It's not working. It's a bunch of idols. And so when Christianity came out, they go, okay, now this is what I'm talking about. This makes sense. I think, I think that's why it was easy to fall, because it just <laughs> didn't make sense anymore. And you couldn't just keep, you know, praying to idols and whatever. whatever. Whereas, whereas in Christianity, there's no idols. You know, there's no, it's, it's a relationship, relationship with God. God who's available to everybody. It's the Holy Spirit. It's understanding that there's angels around there, that God actually does love you. There is a God bigger than all the, you know, that actually does love you. Okay, now this I can get behind. So Christianity just grew like wildfire. And it seems like the more tragedy, the more it grew, right? All right. So that leads me to this next thing. So how does Paul get to Rome? See, Paul's writing this book of... Rome, he's in um, Greece by Corinth, and he sees all this stuff going on, all this legalism. He doesn't want that to happen in Rome. So he keeps writing, I want to come to Rome. I want to come there. I just can't. I got so much going on here. I got this and this. I want How does he get to Rome? Yes. Yes, he gets arrested, and that's how he gets to Rome. He gets arrested as a prisoner, yes. So sometimes bad circumstances can bring you good things. Yeah, and of course he wanted to go everywhere. He wanted to go. Where did Paul want to go? Yes, he didn't want to go where, yeah, where people already knew about Christ. He wanted to go to new places. Okay, so we've got a church there. Okay, let's, what's, where we go, go next? You know, so, so uh, let me see if I, so here's, you know, Europe, and here's Mediterranean, you know, and then Africa. So here is Portugal, and Portugal, and Spain. Of course, this is, this has to go like this, like this. And you have a boot like this, right? Italy. And then Greece here. So he's going Greece, Italy, Spain, Port you know. So he's trying to spread the gospel, right? So you have, <coughs> what? let's see if there's anything we can look up here. Um, Written in Greece, this is Paul's third journey. He wrote Romans. He also visited Jerusalem, Macedonia, Acacia, Galatia. Achaia, I don't know. Trying to prevent, um, okay. So let's just stop for a minute. What issues are in our church that we might be um, having a problem with. Like if the, Paul is so, you know, worried about the law becoming, you know, getting mixed up in there and people, you know, we don't have to go back to some of these old things. Are there things in our own church 
that we are one that are we're confronting or whatever dealing with we get stuck in some old way that's not progressive stuck in some legalism stuck in um, something that's agitating our church controversies in our church threats to our church is there anything you can think of w women's ordination yeah that could be one that's one that's been discussed quite a bit anything else okay think yeah just um, I don't see a lot of controversy I remember when the Ford thing, I mean, that's, I'm ancient, so way back when Desmond Ford wrote his thing, and that caused a big controversy in the church, you know, and there was a lot of discussion on that whole thing, and in some ways, I think that was good. It made a lot of people really study the Bible, and the whole understanding of righteousness by faith, I think, got more deeply understood, more ingrained. Yeah. Oh, okay. A secular divide. Yeah, either music, dress, diet, you know, yes, how, you know. <laughs> I knew there was some, I went and visited a health center in Paris, France. There was outside these uh, group of, small group of Adventists bought a Napo old Napoleon castle. And they lived strict. Boy, Ellen White, fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables. They all came down with anemia, pernicious anemia, no B12. All of them, they're all in the hospital. Too legalistic. I mean, they had the right spirit, they were doing it, but <coughs> because Ellen Michael says, fruits, grains, nuts, and mixed with a little milk, you know, because she didn't know what she was talking about. Angels telling her stuff. She doesn't know what, you know, the science behind these things. So different things. So sometimes you have to read a lot to understand, you know, some of these things. So they get taken to extremes. Yeah, now they put vitamin B12 in everything. Put it in your soy milk, put it in your <laughs> cheese, put it in your orange juice. You can get vitamin B12 anywhere. You got pills, you got shots, you got, you know, so we understand the science now. So we can now start looking at that. Okay, we see what the point was. Morris Venden tells the story. He was living there in Loma Linda and trying to witness to his non-Adventist neighbors. And they're coming over. And of course, he's all righteousness by faith. You know, Jesus loves you. And, the, and they're, they're just really growing. They go, wow, we're liking this. He's having these Bible studies. The next thing he noticed, they come to his house. They don't, the girl one doesn't have her earrings on. She doesn't, you know, all this stuff. And he's going, oh, no. Somebody got to her, somebody, some legalistic person told her, oh, you can't do this and come to this. You know, he's going, oh, no, they're going to, you know, their faith is going downhill. And so he goes, well, what happened? He goes, I see you're not wearing your earrings. He goes, you know, I was reading this scripture. I said, man, I don't need all this stuff. It was completely on her own. Completely, all this thing was completely on, that's how it should be. Completely on your own. Will you discover by your own personal relationship with the Lord, with the scripture, let God lead you at your own speed, your speed, and God leads you gently, you know, and because we all have backgrounds filled with all kinds of stuff. You don't know where people are coming from, you know, all the things. Okay.
Yes. That's it. There's, and that whole thing, I just call it pride, right? Pride. Asking yourself, this, I think, is the key to life. This is pride. How do you relate to pride? And that's, yeah. Yeah, and I know, like, my daughters, they're always getting these gifts. I have this very wealthy Jewish sister, right? I mean, super wealthy. So what do they get for gifts? Jewelry, all the time. They, my daughters paid nothing for it. And they're getting diamond earrings and diamond necklaces and everything. That, how do you, you know, deal with that when you spent nothing, you know, for it? <laughs> so... And, and culture changes. Times change. Like 100 years ago, or not bringing people wore wedding rings. That was not a thing. It's just a, sort of a modern thing. So it's, it became modern. So now in our days, you get married, you wear a wedding ring. So if, so if you're at a store, like a single man like me, you're at a store, you look at a woman, woman she's got a wedding ring, you're not going to talk to her. Because it's that's a culture. That It's a communication. Communication. And I... And I and my, I was, when I was married, my wife did never wear a wedding ring. And all these guys are hitting on her all the time. So she came to me and goes, I got to have a wedding ring. I said, okay, no, I understand. It makes sense. Because she was thinking this would prevent all this, you know, <laughs> So then the culture changed again. Now... If you wear a wedding ring, that could be a come on because I'm safe. You know, you don't have to worry about a relationship because we can just have an affair and not worry. So it's all messed up world. It's Babylon. We're in the midst of the just, I mean, it's so confusing. You don't know what is what up anymore. But um, somehow that, that pride gets in here. I want to see where this goes. All right. But we're, now we're talking about who was in Rome, okay? Paul's in Rome in prison, ministering. Who were these people? It calls the saints. That word holy, let me see if I have this up. <coughs> A guy who's A guy who's A G I O U S. See, Greek isn't that hard. It's almost like ours. It means holy. Um, separate. Okay. He, that's what the saints means. That's the word, holy, separate, you know. A Gaius, when you see Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, the Greek word is a Gaius, pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma, holy, breath, pneuma is breath, breathe, spirit, breath, you know, so. 
So these were the saints. What were the saints like in Rome? Okay, let's look at this. Um, Romans 1, 7. Okay, we're getting right at the beginning of Rome. Okay. We want to read Romans 1 7. Okay, to all be in order. Called to be saints. Who's called to be saints? Everyone. Not just the people in Rome, everyone, right? We're all called to be saints, 100%. Everyone on the planet, since the planet began, we're all called to be saints. No one's left out. You know, like the whole idea of um, predestination, well, some, you know, are called. We're all called. Just be sure, right there, we're all called. And you respond, it's your free choice. God's not going to force you. It's your free choice. Okay? We're all called. And what is that? Romans... um, Ephesians, no, Ephesians 1, 4. Okay, let's look that up. Ephesians 1, 4, just so we're clear on who the gospel is for. Okay, Ephesians 1, 4. Should I read that? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, that's the Agaius, the saints, and without blame before him in love. According, he has chosen us. How many did he choose? All of us. Every one of you. You're all chosen. Every one. And chosen you to be saints. Chosen you to be holy. To be separate. Separate from the world. And this, the, we talked about it last time. In our own hearts is the sinful nature, right? And we have, when we born again, we have this new nature. We're trying to separate ourselves from the nature. It's still there. It's always going to be there. It's too bad. It is uh, the nature of man, the, they say. We're trying to separate ourselves. So in a sense, we separate ourselves from worldly things. We don't do the things that the world world does. We don't do them just because the world does them. We, we do them because what we do is different than they, what they do. No, we're not trying to be peculiar, you know. Some people do that, you know. They, they dress so they look weird, you know, to get attention. Well, that's the, now you're back to the pride thing again. So You know, I heard the story, James White one time, he came off the road, you know, because these guys used to travel in covered wagons, miles and miles, all dusty. He came to this one house he's supposed to preach the next day, and he's all dusty and dirty, so the house is taking him in and says, hey, give, give me your clothes, and we'll wash them up, you know, we'll get them cleaned up. So here, wear some of my husband's clothes, his clothes. So he puts on, and his husband's got this nice suit, you know, starch shirt and everything. So he goes to church in this suit and starch shirt, and the elders in church goes, what are you wearing all those fancy clothes for? He goes, what? <laughs> you can't win, you know. <laughs> and they're praying in the circle, and it says, please forgive James White for wearing vanity clothes. <laughs> you just can't judge people. You don't know what's going on. You don't know their background. Give them a break. Think positive. Just love people. Love them for who they are. Don't worry about all this other stuff means nothing you don't know what's going on in their life their struggles their their trials the things that are going on so we're all called everyone is a chosen every person we're all chosen we're all called every person so you see people um look at every person as a child of god or potential child of god every person Well, obviously, some people are better than others, you know. Of course, I'm better than Leo. I mean, come on. 
No, that's ridiculous. We all have our part to play. We all have our talent, our little bit, whatever it is. We, you know, a lot of times you don't even know what it is. But people come up to you and say, hey, I really appreciate it. Because what? I, I didn't know I did that. You know, We all have our part. We're all part of the body, you know. Well, but in my world, martyr, the Greek word martyr means what? Witness. It doesn't mean t being killed. It, well, being killed is a good witness. Maybe you are going to be, you know. <laughs> okay, I die daily. There you are. That's. Yeah. Okay, this last one, 2 Peter 3, 9. Let's put the nail in the coffin here. 2 Peter 3, 9, so you know. <coughs> the Lord is not slack concerning his prophet, as some may count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. How many? All. all. Now that my little Greek Bible says pas. Pas. That's all. That's the whole thing. That's the whole world. All would come to repentance. All. That's how many the Lord wants. He wants us all. All of us. Except for Leo. <laughs> He's going to have to, until he gets martyred, then okay, then maybe I'll, we'll accept him. How do you want to be martyred? Shot from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay or the, or burned at the stake. Huss and Jerome. Yeah. Okay, let's go to back to Romans 1 8. We're going to, we're looking at the saints in Rome. How what were they like? Back to Romans 1 8. So here's Paul, not even in Rome. And Rome has a church that has such strong faith that the whole world knows about it. So how did that happen? How did Rome get so on fire for the Lord? We don't know. We don't know how it happened. Well, but, you know, Christians were, you know, moving and traveling. And so that even you don't have to be the big religious leader to go and spread the gospel. You know, when Jesus healed that uh, demoniac, right? And Jesus said, said what told him to do what? He just said, go back home. He goes, he wanted to come with him. No, he goes, don't go. No, you don't need to come with me. Just go back to your home. Just go back to your family. And it is, some researchers say that when he went back, he converted his family. And his two kids are the ones in Acts that converted the whole town. So just, you know, people just going out on your own. Just right where you are. You can do this great work. So <coughs> we don't really know how the church came to be. But let's, okay, Romans 15, 14. They had these three traits here. Romans 15, 14. Okay, read those three traits filled with 
Okay. And what's the last one? Able to admonish. It could, yeah, let's look, let's see if there's a interpretation. No theato, same as to put in mind, to caution, to reprove gently, to admonish, warn, exhort. Okay, um, calling attention to, admonish, exhortation. What? Yes. Okay. So here we are. Look at this. We're back to the three. Remember, I always bring up three things, right? Faith, hope, and love. So I would say this right here, knowledge. Whenever there's, you see the word knowledge, always think of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So when you learn, your faith grows. So your knowledge, that's their faith. This um, goodness, this is, I call this the hope, because hope, goodness, this is good. Let me... Make sure I'm okay on this. Goodness, usually that word, the Greek word means good works. Goodness, let's see. Hey, got those to me. Goodness, virtues, and goodness, virtue. Good imitate. Okay, no, it's not not this time, it's not the good works one. But anyway, I would call that the hope. And then this able to admonish. I call this the love in the sense that, you know, sometimes you have tough love. You know, you have to, hey, if you care for a person, they're doing something, you tell them about it. A lot of times, we we don't care. (laughs) Go ahead, whatever. That's not love. That's not love. Be able to admonish. But also has the idea of gently, and it has the idea of encouraging, too. You know, hey, you're better than this, or you (laughs) you can do it. I think you can do this. Yes, I'll, you know, I believe in you. You can be okay, you know, whatever. Encourage, able to communicate. Love right here. The essence of love is relationship, okay? The, the foundation of relationships is communication. You cannot have a relationship if you don't have communication, okay? Communication to God, we call prayer. Talk to God like a friend. He is your friend. He's right there. He's right at your right hand all the time, 24-7. He's your friend. He's not going anywhere. Talk to him. That's prayer, communication to God, and communication to your friends, to everyone. You, you tell him that. He goes, God, I want a new car. I want a Mercedes. But I know I shouldn't be wanting this. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why do I want this new car? What, what's wrong with me that I just, all I think about is, you know, you just be open. Just open your heart to every nth of your soul, you know. Then you're working out your own salvation in the sense you're working out your own therapy. God is the great therapist. He's the counselor. When you talk to him, He's talking back to you. You don't know he's talking, but he is. He's talking that if you talk these things through, you'll start getting ideas, and you'll come to conclusions that you never, ever thought of before. Well, what does the Bible say about that? Holy Spirit is praying for you he, with grumblings and murmurs. Because you don't even know. You, I got so. I don't even know. Uh, you know. I, I got no words. God knows exactly what you're saying. He, yes, yeah. That's all you can do. And yeah. Yeah, sometimes just be in the moment. Just be in that, you know, place. Let your mind relax, you know. 
is yeah so okay on this communicate yes uh -huh. Me, you, or my personal, or, or is this an open question to the, yeah. <coughs> well, let me just, just develop this a tiny bit more. Communication is the substance of relationship. Prayer to God, and do we're talking about how do we pray to God. There's different kinds of prayer. I mean, when I get up in the morning, man, I kneel down, I just pour my heart out, you know. That's meaningful to me. But I'm also praying when I'm walking. I'm praying when I'm driving. I don't need to be on my knees to pray, but there's almost a different level of intensity, you know, because, okay. But now p communication with others. We need to learn how to communicate with others. You know, uh, what's the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People? There's a whole lot of stuff to learn about how to get along with people because we need to get over our resentments and our unforgiveness and all these things. And if you have these relationships that aren't going good, you've got to, how do I open the communication so I can, you know, resolve that? Of course, the Bible says be at peace with, you know, with all men as much as you can be. You know, you, but at least to try to not have blocked in any communication, because that's the love, you know, the, the communication to God and, and communication to others. Because you're really not going to have love relationships if you don't have communication. So if you're in a family, you need to be spending time each day communicating with each member of your family. That's how you show that love. Uh, you know, and sometimes you can have too much communication. You know, like if you've ever had a conversation after a half hour or hour, okay, now we're just going over the same old thing. Okay, we got, we got other things to do. So, but you got to have some communication. You know, you can't just say, hi, have a good, that's, that's, that's not a lot, a lot of communication. You know, two seconds. You got to have, to have a love relationship, you're going to have to have some communication. Try and spend time with each of your love you know, relationships. And this, of course, is exemplified in the sanctuary because you had the bowl of incense, right? Incense, this is uh, prayers going up to the saints. That's the symbol of love. And in the Ten Commandments, in the um, most holy place, you had the Ark of the Covenant, you had a bowl of manna, Aaron's rod that budded, right? Three things. Ten Commandments, this is love for God and love for others. That's this love. That's what these symbols mean. The symbol in the holy place, that symbol was symbol of this love right here. The Ten Commandments is love for God. Love, that's the symbol. The bread here, the show bread out here, this is all bread. Bread. The bread from heaven. What's the bread from heaven? Jesus is the bread from heaven. Jesus is the word. So this bread translates into the word, translates into Jesus, which is our faith is in Jesus, okay? That's the symbol of faith. And then the Aaron's rod, and you had the candlestick, right? Aaron's rod became a, alive, how? By itself? Did, you, did they plant it? No, by a miracle. God did a miracle, supernatural, had nothing to do. That we are dead sticks, just like that rod. God does a miracle in us, and we bear fruit. You got no fruit unless God does a miracle in you. That's how it works. And he's trying to teach us that. With this candlestick, is that golden candlestick put off light? No, golden candlestick has no light. You have to light something. The, there's a little bowl up here that you put oil in, right? The oil goes down and the lights and the wick and it's the oil that burns. That's the Holy Spirit. You got no light unless you have the Holy Spirit inside you. You got nothing. You might look fancy. You might be all gold and you know dressed up nice, but you got nothing. That's the Holy Spirit. Is in. That's all He's trying to teach you. Let the Holy Spirit be in you. Let God do the miracles in you. Let God do it. Then give the credit to Him. 
is him that's doing it. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you, 100%. Well, they all come. They all, they, you know, of course they, of course they, you know, if you, if you do it like, you know, um, the mind, the body, the spirit, they're all, you know, it's all connected, overlaps, you know, how much is faith is love and how much of love is faith and everything. But that faith and, yeah, I don't know. Faith, open love, the great. Well, it's, it's, there's a, I understand where Ron is coming from because I have sort of that same idea that faith is sort of that seed God gives everyone. You know, He gives that faith and that faith grows into, every, you know, in so many ways. It, it grows into everything in your life. All right. Good luck. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for this. This message, thank you for your love. Thank you for the, your scripture that we can go to and we can learn that you do love us. You want us to strengthen our faith. Just provide us with ways that we can reach out to others around us. Give us opportunity. Help us to know how to pray that we can talk to you about anything. Help us to learn communication skills with those around us. Just thank you for this time together. Thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for this worship service. Pray you continue to be with us today in Jesus' name. Amen.